All right, so in this video, we are going to determine the structure of all of the isomers of the form Ma2BCDE. So this is an octahedral uh, coordination environment around the central atom, typically M. This is a transition metal. Uh, and this is basically the second most complicated example we can go over with uh, monodentate ligands uh, in an octahedral environment, right? Uh, most the one with the most isomers is going to be when there's six unique ligands, but this has five unique uh, monodentate ligands. And so the way we're going to be doing this is the way that we've always been solving these problems. We're going to look at uh, trans pairs. Um, and so what I mean by that is pairs that are across from one another in space. Uh, and we have six ligands, so there's going to be three uh, sets of pairs in each of these cases. We're going to do this in as alphabetical as way as possible. So we're going to start with AA. Um, that's the most alphabetically the highest in priority. And then we're going to go BC, DE. So that's one structure. Uh, now, next, we, can't, uh, we can do AA again. Uh, instead of BC, we're going to do BD. That would be next in alph alphabetical order. Uh, and then we'll do C. E, okay, and that, those are unique from one another. We'll try to do AA again. We've done BD, so we do BE, and that forces uh, this to be CD. We'll keep trying to do AA. Uh, we've done all the Bs, right? There's no B, there's no F, so there's no BF. So now we go to the Cs. Uh, we don't want to do CA, because that's displaying something in reverse alphabetical order. Um, within a, within a pair. So we, that's just to be consistent, we're never, we're, CA is always gonna be listed as AC, okay? So you're never gonna have this reverse alphabetical order listing within a pair. So we have, uh, we have the same thing with CB. There's no CC, because there's only one C. So we're at CD. Well, that forces this to be BE, which we just wrote up above in a different order, right? Um, and so we can continue on in this way, AACE, that would force this to be BD, and we have that up here, and then AACs uh, are done, so DE would be the only one that's in alphabetical order within a pair, that forces that to be BC, we have that up above. So this shows us we're done with the AAs, and we go on to AB. AB, our most alphabetical advanced next one is going to be with an A, so that'd be A, C, D, E. We don't have that up above. We keep trying in this manner, A, B, A, D, and that would make this C, E. That is unique. A, B, A, E would be next, and that would make this C, D. Okay. And A, B, we're done with A's here now. So we could try B, well, we can't do B because we already used upper B. We could try C, D, um, and that would make this A, E. Well, that's just what we wrote above. So that's no good. Uh, and then A, B, D, E would be another one. That would force this to be A, C, and we have that up above here. So our A, Bs are done. We'll move on to the A, Cs. And you know, there is some redundancy in, in going through it this way, but you make sure you don't miss any. So I always like to do it. A, C. Alphabetically, we'd have A, B, but we have that up above here. A, C, A, D. Uh, we do not have that one yet. And that would make this one uh, B, E. So that is unique. You can see we don't have any A, C, A, Ds. A, C, A, E would make this B, D. And again, that is unique. Okay? And uh, we can now try A, C, B, D. Well, that's going to get us what we just had. A, C. So you can see you know, once you get past the A's here, you end up not generating unique things. A, C, uh, B, E 
would get us uh, the third pairing AD, that match above. Um, and so lastly, we have AC, we're done with the Bs. We have D, E, that would get us uh, this one, which we already crossed off, it matches up that one, A, B. Um, so we keep going in this way. We'll put them off to the left here. Uh, so we're done with the ACs, now we do the AD. AD, uh, AB, we should already have that right here. AD, AC, we already have uh, that down here. But AD, AE, you can see now when these pairs are going in alphabetical order, it's like a reverse, that is going to be a new one. Uh, so that will be BC. We don't have any A, D, A, E anywhere. So that is new. So, so far we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That turns out to be all of them. Uh, and from here on out, they're going to be redundant. Uh, so we have, well, it's good to check. A, D, <coughs> we're done with the A's. So we're gonna have uh, B, C, well, that's just what we wrote above. A, D, uh, B, E, uh, we have that here, and uh, A, D, Bs are done here, C, E, so make this A, B, and we have that right here. Okay, we can check if there's any A, E's that we missed, uh, so that'd be A, E, A, B, we have that right there. A, E, A, C, we should have that here. It's nice, when you write it in this systematic way, you can find the ones that you've done very quickly as well. Um, <clears throat> A, E, A, D, let's up this one. And A, E, uh, B, C, now. Uh, that's going to make this A, D, so we have that up there. And these are just writing other ones in different orders. That's that's what ends up happening here. Um, A, E, B, D. That would make this A, C, so we should have that there, in the A, C's. A, E, C, D. A, um, B. So this should be an A, B, and indeed we have it right there. The last one, we have uh, D, oh, we can't do D, so we're done with the A's. All right, so we've done A, E's, and at this point, you know, you could probably stop, but if we want to be really thorough, we can now go B, C, right, A, A, we have that up above. I'll just try to go quickly here. B, C, A, D. Um, we should have that. Let's see, this becomes an A, E. We have that up there. Uh, B, C, A, E. We we'll get A, D. Uh, so that's just right there. And now we're at the uh, B, C, uh, let's see. We found, so this would be D, E, and we get A, A. Basically, we're, we're working through writing all the ones that we all know that we already um, wrote, but now in different orders, right? Uh, that's that's what this is doing. And so we're done with the B, C, so we have the B, D, A, A. We have that up there. And we have B, D, A, C. Right here, and we have I got a room, so I'm gonna go up here. Um, B D A E. B D A E right there. And B D C E, which makes this A A. And we have that right here.
Almost home free. We've done the BDs. Now we're at uh, CDAA. It's this third one. CDAB. It's this one. CDAE. And that here. Again, sort of redundant at this point, but you know, we're just checking. This is how you can guarantee that you get it right. I uh, don't miss any. And so now we're at C, D, uh, B, E alphabetically. Forces that to be A, A. And we have that as our third one. And very last ones here are uh, going to be D, E, the D, E, so D, E, A, A. That's our first one. D, E, A, B. Uh, that's down here, and D, E, A, C, that is right here, it's an A, B one, and D, E, B, C, and it's going to pop A, A, that's our very last one, written in a different way there. Okay. So the point is at this point that we have nine isomers. So now we can draw those, right? Let's give these labels. One, two, three, four, five, six, just so we can keep track of these. Seven, eight, and the last one was over here. So now let's draw all these. So we're just gonna draw uh, number one. So A and A are trans from one another, so we put them across from one another. I'm putting them up and down. We could put them, you know, to the side, left and right. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you're following what your trans pairs say. So here's BC, and here's uh, DE across from one another. So again, if I put AA where DE are and DE where AA are, uh, that would just those would be equivalent structures. There would be a rotation or some other symmetry operation that could get you from one structure to another, and that tells you they're not unique structures. Number two, we again have an AA trans to one another. This time it's B and D that are trans to one another, and C and E. Structure number three, we have <clears throat> A, A again, they're trans to one another, B and E, and D, C. Structure so number four, so writing these out, this is the easy part, right? A, B, A, C, D, E. Five. A, B are trans from one another. D, and A, and C, and E. Number six. A and B again are trans to one another. Here you have A and E, and you got C and D. Number seven, A and C are transform either. A and D, and then B and E. Eight, almost there. A and C again. A and E. B and D. Nine, last one is M A D transform other. 
and E again, trans, but now uh, B and C. Okay, so these are our nine stereoisomers. Now, the next thing we can ask um, is how many of these, if any, are chiral? And so when we think about uh, chirality, we think about <clears throat> whether or not there's a mirror plane. If there's a mirror plane in the molecule, we know that is not chiral, so it's achiral. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and uh, search for mirror planes. And uh, if you've been watching the other videos, we know that anytime you have uh, a trans pair that has the same, so A and A, or like a B and B, we don't have that in this case because there's only one B, you're going to have a mirror plane. And that mirror plane is going to cut through the, uh, the molecule uh, so that that pair is, is cut through. So we have a mirror plane there. So that's a horizontal mirror plane because the wedges, right, means it's coming out towards us. Dashes means it's going behind us. The A is on top and there's an A on bottom. So the A is looking at another A in a mirror. So when you do this mirror plane operation, M, E, C, B, and D do not move. But the top A moves into the bottom A. The bottom move A moves into the top A. But then nothing changes. So because nothing changed, that's a mirror plane. Because there's a mirror plane in the molecule, we know this is not chiral. This is an achiral molecule. Okay? And same thing is going to be true for these structures two and three, because it has these trans AA pairs. And the mirror plane, with how I drew it, I drew it in all these cases with A uh, and A on the top and bottom. Didn't have to draw it that way, but makes uh, it easier to draw the mirror plane. So structure two is achiral, and also structure three. Um, and now, if you stare at the other ones, the only other way in octahedral environments you can get a mirror plane is if you don't have you know, A and A together, or B and B together, or transpair. You need two ABs or two ACs, you know, two of the same ones. And you can't have that because we have five unique ligands. So all these other ones, you can stare at them and look at it, um, but because these A's are cis to one another, right, they're 90 degrees apart instead of 180 degrees apart, there's going to be no mirror planes. And for, uh, for almost all molecules, definitely the octahedral ones, um, if you don't have a mirror plane, you're going to be chiral. Okay, And so... All of these six, uh, you can search, you know, for mirror planes here, but you're always going to be moving like a something else into something else when you draw a mirror plane, like a B into an E or a B into a C or something like that. So all of these are going to be chiral because so we can't find a mirror plane. So uh, we have nine stereoisomers with six. Uh, enantiomeric pairs, right? We have left-handed and right-handed versions of those six structures, four through nine, with six enantiomeric pairs. So if you want to think about total isomers, right, we have the three achiral ones, and then we have six pairs of left-handed and right-handed versions, so that's 12, so three plus 12 total, we have 15 total isomers is one way to think about it. Okay. And so uh, that is it for this sort of problem. Um, stay tuned for many other problems discussed on different types of isomers.